Good morning, church. Today, I want to encourage each of you to walk in the victory that was purchased for us on the cross. Salvation is not a journey of, I need to do this, I need to do this. Because of his sheer grace, we have been purchased by his blood. We have been rescued from the tyrannical powers of darkness and we have been brought into a kingdom of light and today we will walk in the light it is the light of glory the light of jesus that will illuminate the darkness before us so today if you feel that the road ahead is foggy it's not clear you don't know what to do you can only take one or two steps at a time that is okay because the word of the lord says that his that darkness before us will be illuminated by the light of his word. I want to read one verse that really strengthened me this morning from Job chapter 29 and verse 3. And I pray that you will hold on to this scripture and claim this as your portion. This is a portion where Job, Job is thinking back about his past, his good days. And the key about why this is important to you and me today in prayer prophetically is because this is the promise of anyone who walks in friendship with the Lord. Job, during his suffering, felt isolated from the Lord. But in Job 29, he talks about the beauty of walking in friendship with the Lord. And verse 3 says, in those days when he lit up the way before me and I walked safely through the darkness, when I was in my prime God's friendship was felt in my home. Today, I pray that today you would choose to receive this word and say, Lord, today my body belongs to you. My body is not a playground for the enemy to come and deposit thoughts of heaviness, regret and failures. I cancel every demonic thought that comes that says that we are, or my life is useless and instead help us like Paul to forget the things behind and to strain forward, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith and to run with faithfulness the race that is set before us, knowing that as we endure in the faith of Jesus, we will be transformed to be mature and complete like him, lacking in no good thing. So today I want to remind you, as Job said in well, chapter 29 and verse 3, when he lit up the way before me and I walked safely through darkness, I pray that today we will walk safely despite the darkness around us. Yes, October is a month when occult, the worship of dead saints is at a high level, is at a peak level when Satan worship is high, when so many people walking in ignorance are piercing their body, are hurting themselves, are offering sacrifices of children even to Satan who is so bloodthirsty and wants to destroy mankind from enjoying a fellowship with the Lord. I pray that today the light of his word will light up the way before you and you will walk in safety as you keep praying in the spirit, as you claim your city, your neighborhood, your children, your children's children for the Lord. I pray that today you would be strengthened to keep praying in the spirit and not get frustrated when rocky paths come before you. For for in Job 29 verse 6, we are told, my steps were awash in cream and the rocks gushed olive oil for me. I pray that butter would just flow out of our steps. You know, walking on a buttery path means it's so smooth. You don't have to struggle to walk. So for each of you who's feeling heavy laden and who is feeling heavy hearted, let me tell you, trade the spirit of heaviness for garments of praise. Praise is what enables you. And why do we praise? Because Jesus paid it all. Salvation is a journey of celebrating what Jesus did on the cross for us. Not about doing things to earn his favor. He died for us while we were yet rebellious, while we were yet in sin. It is nothing good that you and I did that prompted Jesus to die for us. It was because of his deep love for us. He saw how we all like sheep have wandered and gone astray. So today, do not waste one more second regretting over your past, but remind Satan that he is a loser, that hell has been prepared for him and his fallen angels. Not for you and me, because you and I who believe in the name of Jesus, we have this assurance that when we have believed in Jesus and repented and confessed of our shortcomings, that we forgive us, Lord, for relying on ourselves, for trying to prove that I am good because of my good works. 
forgive me, Lord, for that sin. When we confess that and come before Jesus and say, Lord, I need you. I have failed to fulfill all of the Ten Commandments. I have failed to love you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength. I have failed to love my neighbor as myself. When we come with this repentant heart and confess that we need him, he will pour out his spirit without measure on us. Then we are transformed to be a vessel of glory in whom the light of glory will reside. And then we can walk safely even through the darkness. His word will illuminate the darkness before us. David sang about this in Psalm 18. In Deuteronomy 32 verse 13, we are told in 12 and 13, the Lord alone guided them. They followed no foreign gods. This is the song of Moses where he's talking about how the Lord led them. The Israelites through the wilderness. Verse 13 says, He let them ride over the highlands, highlands and feast on the crops of the field. He nourished them with honey from the rock and olive oil from the stony ground. The Lord is the one who will let us ride on heights so that we are not bothered by the petty struggles on the lowlands. We are not meant to be running on the lowlands struggling. But every place that our feet should walk should be awash in cream. There should be a heavy anointing flowing out of every step that we take. Because Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. When we rest in Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit will elevate us. For it is written, those who wait upon the Lord will soar up on eagles' wings. These are not my words. These are not empty uh, positive thinking meditations. This is the written living word of God. The word was God. and In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God and the word is God. Jesus is the word. And we are fortunate to live in this age where we have the Bible translated into so many translations that makes it easy for us to understand his word. And this word says that he is the one who will let us ride over highlands and feast on the crops of the field. Today, let us nourish and eat his word and know that he is sweeter than honey in the rock. And olive oil will flow even from the stony ground. So when you face your obstacle today, remember, it is not that the Lord is enjoying watching you struggle, but it is for you to stand before that olive oil, sorry, to stand before that rocky ground and see the oil flow out of that rocky place. There is the heaviness of the anointing that will break every yoke and the olive oil that flows out of these rocky grounds will be a blessing and soothing comfort, not only to you, but to your children and your children's children and anyone who comes in contact with you. The Lord has designed you and is transforming you to be a vessel of healing to many around you. I pray that today you will truly be an instrument of peace and joy First to yourself, because as you enjoy the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit, as you enjoy the friendship of God that Job talked about in chapter 29, when I was in my prime, God's friendship was felt in my home. I pray that your heart would become a living sanctuary for the Lord. When the Almighty is with you, that is when your steps will become a wash and cream and the rocks will gush out olive oil. I pray that the anointing oil will drive out will make the impossibilities possible, that you will see with your eyes of faith the way that is being made for you, for he is way maker, miracle worker, and a God for whom impossible is where he always begins. So do not get frustrated by your impossibilities, but see the olive oil, the anointing oil flowing out of your difficult situation so that you will be a blessing to many, for you have been called to be an ambassador of Christ, to reconcile the hearts of many children back to their father. Have a blessed day of walking in faith and knowing the power of the Lord. That our words will be demonstrated, backed up by demonstrations of power. For he who believes in me, these signs and wonders will follow them, says his word. Have a blessed day.